I'm really happy to be here with Asma. Um, so Asma has taken a couple of my courses and she has amazing YouTube channel, over 200,000 subscribers, and it is focused on Muslim life hacks. And both men and women uh, watch her channel, but she's thinking of uh, spinning out a channel just for Muslim women. Anyway, we could talk about that, Asma. Um, welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm so glad to, to have you and, and to be able to ask you about the story of your channel. Thank you so much, George. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, of course, I will put the, the link to your channel below this. And um, it's called, I, maybe you could start with the name of your channel. It's Bliffy, Blyfy, <laughs> B L I I F E E. So, two I's That's and two right. E's. So, so tell, tell yeah. us the story of how that came to be. Okay, so initially, um, the channel's intention is to talk about com combining and balancing of beliefs and lifestyle, so not compromising on either. So combining the words belief and lifestyle, I've made Bliffy. Initially, it was B-L-I-F-E, but because that name's been taken up by majority of many um, nutritional and health companies, I I made it wanted to make it wanted to make it unique, so I added an extra I and extra E at the end. So the pronunciation was still intended to be B life, but um, because my um, brainstorming sheet was on my desk and my br little brother just picked it up and he's like, "What's Bliffy?" So I was like, "That was not the intended intended pronunciation, but uh, that sounds pretty cool." So that's how Bliffy came to be about. Yeah, that's great. I love that. I, I love that little, these little um, happy accidents, and uh, <laughs> and it, wor it works out. And your channel is really, I love how focused it is. It really is addressed towards Muslims. Uh, it's, it's as far as I can tell, all Muslim topics. And one, one quick thing I should get into, I should mention before I, we get into the story of it. I've always really respected Muslims for the, the, the discipline of prayer, you know, and not just the prayer, I mean, five times a day, plus there's other disciplines. And I just always really uh, respected that because, well, if you want to build a business, discipline is important. And so, and so uh, I'm sure, you know, being a Muslim, that, that, that kind of rubs off on, on other areas of life and work too. Right. Um, okay. So as all, as we all do, you started with a channel of zero subscribers and I'm curious if you want to say anything about the early days when you, when you began, and how long have you been doing this, the, the, the YouTube it's, thing? Yeah, it's been oh, five years now. Only, started only in five years. Yeah. Only five years. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's amazing. I mean, and you're, you're really young yourself. And so um, how did the channel, how, how did you have this, this, this idea to start the channel and how did you begin it? And how did you, how did you begin it with um, the fact that it was zero and, and, you know, so tell us about that. Yeah, um, initially I came across this advice that you should be focusing on one person, even if you can make an impact on one person's life, that is, um, you've done a great thing. And then um, slowly I used some tactics, some techniques, strategies to increase those subscribers and audience, um, which took a while when I was my first subscriber from my personal account. And then like, as that went on, uh, I would keep refreshing my views and, you know, 10 views, 13 views. Then at one point I was like, oh, 100 views. And so then consistency plays a big role in this, which um, it is it is hard to be consistent, uh, sure. if you, especially if you have a busy lifestyle. But um, if when if you've got the time, definitely consistency is something I would recommend. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, the question. Um, no, no, no. You're you're going. You're, and I'm cur I'm curious. Was there a particular breaking moment where it mm -hmm. went from just a few dozen views, a few hundred views, to thousands of views? Like, was there a, was that? So let me question. Was that an accident, or was it a conscious strategy that actually worked for you, or maybe a bit of both? Yeah. Yeah, so there was a multiple mix of things happening over here. Um, one of the videos that I talk about is uh, the Hajjud. The Hajjud is a time of the night where um, we believe that it's a very special time where God comes down to, um, like, like is more closer to us because it's a, it's, a, it's a hard time to wake up. It's a time that a lot of us um, want to spend connecting to God or Allah, we call him. So um, a lot of us want to wake up at that time. And I I made a video about my secret to wake up at that time. And around the same time, there was a celebrity, I think her name, I think um, she made a video, her name is Sana Khan. 
she's from India. She made a video. Um, she's got millions of followers. And so she made a video um, in encouraging people to wake up at that time. So I think this is what happened. People saw that video and they were like, how to wake up for the hajjit. So when they searched that, my video came up. And um, from there, they saw my channel, found my channel. And there was this whole insurge of people from India and Pakistan who follow Sana Khan. And um, that's how my channel, so I, I, I was like, it was, it was like this, my analytics uh, graph is like this and suddenly just goes up like that. Um, it goes from 1,000 views to, I think, within a few days from 3,000 subscribers, I reached 100,000 subscribers. So that was wow. a big, big boom, yeah. Yeah, that was that must have been, I, I, I wonder if that was like stressful or uh, yeah. if, because of, I imagine you started getting a lot of comments. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, the mindset of people from the Southeast Asian uh, countries is a bit different to the Western mindset. So, um, like, there's this taboo of uh, female Muslim being on social media. Uh, so I did get a lot of comments um, asking me why I'm doing this and it's not right for me to do this, right. etc. cetera. So um, while I understand where they're coming from, it was hard for me to deal with that quick because I did not have that goal of 100,000 within that yeah. short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, I, I think I shut down at that time. I, I, I just disappeared. And um, for one month, I did not, post a comment or show any part of myself and then I was like okay now that it's happened I need to accept this and I have to go back to my main purpose which is helping people to balance their faith and lifestyle so what I did to come back was I did a live stream I would do live streams every week regardless but after this whole shutdown I thought I should connect with my new audience and I started I had this um, live stream and I was like okay so welcome guys I'm happy to see a lot of you new people new faces here um, uh, this is who I am this is what I do uh, etc so it was more of a connecting moment and from there I think my confidence went up, up again and I was ready to begin and go back again yeah yeah oh that's good I'm so glad yeah it is, uh, I can't imagine, I mean, having so many people say that you shouldn't be online and you shouldn't, that's, um, I mean, I, I get the occasional kind of mean or critical comment and every single one, I mean, I, I think all of us who create, like every single critical comment is, is, is difficult and can like ruin your day or your week or part of your day. And so I can't imagine getting so many. And so congratulations on you know kind of developing that capacity to receive all that I and mean, still probably to this day i imagine you get some of those comments do, yeah. so that's really that's I've inspiring said, I do a good amount of positive comments so 90 percent are very good good but 10 yes. percent are the ones that impact me more but i'm yeah. also grateful for the 90 percent positive comments yes and i love that you mentioned that ratio it's true i mean <laughs> it's usually 90 to 99 percent positive you know and sometimes and okay so you had this, and I think what's interesting about the fact that you went from 3,000 to 100,000, you know, almost overnight, is that it was a trend that you your content aligned with. Yes. And I feel like that's something I'm still learning myself, to be honest with you. Like, I, I've i always accidentally came into trends. And like, now I'm like, okay, now I'm actually going to analyze, like, hmm, this celebrity in my industry is doing this. Well, guess what? I have a I have my own take on this. So I'm going to go ahead and say that. And so have you, have you done that since then? Have you actually consciously looked at the trends and, and made videos based on that? Yeah. Um, there was this one um, thing that happened. Um, I think before I took off, uh, my channel took off, there was this trend of um, hijabi influencers, the, like influencers who wear the hijab. They began taking their hijabs off for whatever personal reasons, yeah. but in a way they, we looked up to them at a certain point for inspiration inspiration for the hijab. So when they took it off, it was devastating on us. So um, to see our role models, uh, yes, you know, of going back of course, to of where we came from. Yeah, yeah, so I did my take on that. And I, I made a video on like saying that instead of being devastated by like I mean it is valid to be devastated by that it is valid to feel let down by that but at the same time let's use this opportunity to encourage those hijabi influencers who are doing what you are looking for and uh, let's move that attention from there shift that attention to a positive yeah. lo um, lookout and um, let's support the oncoming people and you know 
uh, that was my take on this uh, trend that was happening back then. So I do sometimes jump on these to, on these things to give my take on uh, certain things that are happening as well. Yeah, I think that's really um, well. It's important, and I, I the pattern that I'm seeing, I, even with my own videos that do well, is that if I'm addressing a current pain, I mean something that my audience is really struggling with. The more that I can tune into that and speak to that and bring comfort, bring encouragement, bring some insight, um, they 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 of course love it, tend to share it, things like that. Whereas um, so many times I'm just talking off the top of my head about different things, and those ten don't tend to do as well. And I feel like this is another example where it's like, okay, the, there's a cultural trend, and your core audience is feeling pain around that feeling sadness pain shock whatever and you're you're bringing and you're bringing the comfort and the and the insight and the sort of encouragement and the kind of movement building back to what they want to focus on and i, I love that and um i think it's really cool i just want to say again like you're like i think a lot of creators want to just focus on i'm going to try to reach the whole world right and you are focused on not only muslims the Muslims who are willing to watch women, Muslim women on YouTube, yes. and who also, and I imagine a lot of Muslims who are watch, willing to watch Muslim women on YouTube probably are anti-hijab, you know, or something like that. And like you are actually, no, I'm going to focus on this niche. So tell, tell me more about, tell us more about this. Like, do you feel like there's a, a I mean, there's obviously a large enough audience because you have a, but tell us, do, do you, do you see that being like a, um, is, is it, I mean, is it, is it saturated? Is that like, are there a lot of people like you? Like, tell, tell us about that. Yeah, there are a lot of hijabi influencers out there, more so yes. concentrating on the fashion and lifestyle um, um, side of yeah. things. I'm more focused. I think I would say I come under the category of productivity and lifestyle. Um, I would love to make fashion content, but I think that's, I would like to make that more private for Muslim women. So, um, uh, but there are a lot of um, hijabi influencers out there who do make um, content more focused on hijab tutorials or how to dress up and uh, things like that. Whereas my content is more like how to be disciplined in certain areas of your life. Yeah, I really love that. And people are obviously looking for it because they keep coming back to your channel. The other thing I, I noticed with a lot of YouTubers is they will have a viral video like you already explained. Maybe you've had it several times, right? where it's like I see these channels with like a video that has like millions of views and then the channel still has only a few thousand subscribers that happens a lot yeah. and yet that's not the, that's not with your channel your channel has 200,000 subscribers so tell us why do you think that is like why is it people are subscribing to your channel and not just coming for the viral hits and then leaving mm -hmm. I think it's because my videos all follow a certain concept. Like they're all on the same niche. Um, nice. They're not um, like they're not very different to each other. So um, personally, if I visit somebody's YouTube chat, I find someone's YouTube video on my recommended page and I really like it. I will naturally go on their ch channel and see what other content they've got. If that does not align with me, then I would just say this is a one-off thing and I would move yeah. on. Right. So um if it, it really helps to be consistent in your style of videos and have what what you say in your videos what you focus on your core values uh in your videos throughout your channel but if it's you know once you're talking about um for example how to do business and the other time you're talking about how to look after your child and the yeah. third video is um probably about um how to make a floral vase or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all so it's targeting different audiences maybe if we focus on one thing what what is your channel for like look at like channel itself on tvs back when we had the satellite tv like tvs um we would flip through channels a news channel would have news uh even if it's a variety of news it's people go there for news if it's a cartoon channel for kids for babies it's different for um bigger kids it's different um so what does your channel who does that who is it for? Who is it catered for? So when they come to your channel, are they going to stay or are they going to just be there for that one particular video and move on? Yes. I love that. I love that idea of the satellite TV. Like, okay, here's a sports channel, right? Like here's a politics channel. Here's the, like you said, cartoon channel. And it's, um, yeah, that's really, that's really good. And so 
this may this is you know why you're thinking of creating a separate channel for women right so tell tell us about that so i i'm still very confused on this uh so i asked <laughs> you in your one of your q and a sessions yes, yes. of uh, my dilemma of um look i have this audience kind audience who's says they're interested in uh, motherhood content but i think it i don't know maybe it should be a separate channel uh, and also not just that one i'm also thinking of making another channel for muslim content creators muslim entrepreneurs to share the business aspect side of things so i've asked my audience i've polled them I, and 90 percent of them have said they would love to see that content on my existing channel but Looking at the algorithms and how it works and how targeting of audiences works in on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, um, it's it's um, like I said, it's a different audience. So it's yeah. targeting specific. So mothers would go onto this channel, even though they like the content that exists on my current channel. Yeah. If they're interested in motherhood content, they would go there. They would look for it over there. Some yeah. people even suggested that I make playlists. So a playlist specific to moms, sure. playlist specific to entrepreneurs. Yeah. But again, I evaluated that and I'm like, so I may have a huge um, amount of views on my motherhood content, but the same people may not resonate with my That's right. um, yeah. life hacks, Muslim life yeah. hacks content. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the other day I made a video on how to pray on the plane. So not right. a lot of people watch that because my three videos before that were focused on motherhood. And I, whereas I would love for my channel to focus more on videos such as how to pray on a plane. So I think yes. that's where the shift needs to happen and that separation needs to happen. So um, I will be creating two different channels for that. It will be hard to start again yeah. from zero, yeah. but I can yeah. bring in people to my existence. Of course. I think it's a smart idea to occasionally test um, different types of content on the channel to see if it takes off. If it takes off, then it's like the audience to signal to say, hey, you know what, there's there's a there's maybe a niche here. And I think if you say, okay, I want to make more content like that, I, I think it makes sense to have, like you said, a separate channel, literally a channel for this versus a channel for that. Like I'm coming to this channel, I'm expecting this, I want to see this. Oh, you are making that. I'm going to subscribe. Anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you you do that. And I think it makes sense to have um maybe even a separate business channel, et cetera. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, so so I imagine you have probably I don't know maybe, maybe maybe have you had have you had others like ask you about YouTube tips as they come and see your large channel and yeah it, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry uh, do you want to finish off your no no I'm just sentence. wondering and and so what do you say to them <laughs> yeah um I go to a lot of networking programs and um, recently I've participated in a Muslim leadership program. I am currently in a Muslim psychology, um, how to be one of the like first um, first responders and stuff. So when I go to these programs, I introduce myself as a social media content creator, YouTuber, and I say, this is my channel. So they look me up and they're like, oh, how did you come to this amount? So everybody has the question. And I think a lot of people want to be content creators at this in this day and age, and they've got their own message that they want to put out in the world. And so some of them have already tried to do something like this before but may have not seen results that they want. So they do ask ask me, they're like, um, look, I'm on TikTok. How do I succeed on TikTok? Or did you ask for shout outs to get to that amount you have? Um, these are the two questions I've recently got. So they do come up to me and ask me these questions and I'm really happy to help. I'm currently in a stage of life where I don't have much time to create content. So I want to help other content creators to do what they need to do. So even if I can't help others, I can help others help others. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. And so um, as your channel has grown, I imagine, have you been approached about sponsorship, sponsorships, like yes. pe pe companies that want you to promote their products on your YouTube channel and your, by the way, we should mention you have other social media. Tell us about the others. Yeah. Yes, I've got Instagram and TikTok mainly. Great. I am trying to be on LinkedIn as well, yeah. um, because, yeah. but I used to be in the cybersecurity industry. So I'm making that shift on my yes. LinkedIn to from being a cybersecurity person to being a I'm content creator. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, sponsorships are an, like an area that I'm exploring right now because um, I, I would like to have full control on what I talk about yes. on my channel. Yes. And there are <laughs> certain uh, clauses and contracts that can limit me from talking about uh, things that I would like to speak about, especially when it comes to political um, happenings around the world so yeah. like a lot of people like 
uh, with the events happening in Palestine and Gaza, uh, a lot of influencers have not spoken up about this despite their audience wanting them to and bringing awareness to this. But they haven't spoken up because they've got this contract with sponsors or brands that do not want to see this aspect on of yes, that on of their yeah. yeah. So I don't know if I want to be limited in that sense, but at the same time, I am exploring that still with um, brands that align with my values and thoughts. I am very open to sharing what I use personally, my products, um, but I'm also at the same time promoting my own offers. So yes. um, learning from you, George, I am yes. trying to make, create, cultivate my own offers and um, put it out to my audience and focus on what I offer rather than what others yeah. offer, which I'm happy to do. I would love to, um, I do that subtly in other aspects. Yeah. Um, so I am thinking of bringing out this series of uh, how halal, how Muslim friendly is a certain hotel or a certain um, sure. airport or a certain yes. restaurant, for example. Yes. So um, maybe looking at that angle of how it's like friendly for us Muslims, like is there a prayer area? Is there yes. a halal food over there? How friendly are they to hijabis, etc. So um, I'm thinking of informally doing that not getting like not at this stage not looking at sponsorships but i would love to be sponsored uh if i can because um as yeah. at least it didn't, any influencer's dream to be sponsored of course uh, by, yeah. yeah 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 um and so on the politics question so i mean as i was glancing through your videos on on youtube i didn't immediately see um anything about politics but do you talk about that like I, since there's so much pressure now to talk about the, the, the political, I mean, especially in the Muslim world, <laughs> tell us about the, the, your feelings about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, of our audience relies on influencers to um, uh, spread word uh, awareness about yes. what's happening in the world. And yes. uh, there's a lot of misinformation going out there. So, well, I'm not particularly from Gaza or I'm not, Right. Um, sure. My cultural, I have nobody to ask questions about. Right. I may have one or friends, but I yeah. don't have personal contacts. But I do my research. I try to uh, look up and uh, educate myself and then put it out to my audience to show them what's happening. And then they can then further pass it on to other people. But in terms of what I do on my social media with politics is, uh, again, like I educate myself and I put it out there what I've learned. And I usually share what other, others have created. So other people's posts, I put that on, on my stories because yes. I don't know, I don't think of myself to be educated enough to personally speak yeah. uh, on a topic. Well, I can do that. I do have limitations in my life uh, yes. in terms of time and yes, other responsibilities. Of course. Yeah. yeah, so I did make a video on that on Reels, a quick 10-second video on how I'm contributing to this ah. is by um, helping Muslims um, by solidifying their faith so they can then right. do their part in this political aspect. I love that. I love that you are connecting to what you are regularly doing in terms of your content, how that contributes to the empowerment of the person who can then be more effective in facing these um, realities and advocating for, for, um, you know, for their politics. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, uh, I, I want to, I, I know you're busy, so I want to let you go, you know, with, with enough time. Um, is there anything else you want to say about, you know, your, your own content creation journey and, uh, as we, as we complete? Yes. Uh, I would say if you are looking to be a YouTuber or a content creator, focus on con starting first, don't worry about all the nits and bits uh, before beginning, because I know I did that. I spent a lot of time learning about things or questioning myself, but taking action is what will show you what you need to learn. And then you can implement what you've learned instead of theory, doing it in theory, do it in practice. Start, that is the hardest step, and then be consistent. That's when you're going to see results. That's when you're going to see uh, your channel taking off and you give it time, but be consistent and know your intention why are you doing it who are you doing it for personally my intention is doing it for the sake of allah um, yeah. um benefiting the muslim community yeah. while there are benefits to me and other secondary benefits in this because i connected to god i yes. i'm able to persist in it and go ahead even though i don't see results in that yes. moment i yes. am inspired by that thank you thank you for saying that and uh yes that that, that is that kind of um mission is makes it truly sustainable. So I appreciate you mentioning that. So 
Thank you so much, so much Asma, Jeff. for your work and for ha taking the time to show up today. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to have been here. Yeah, thanks.